When a man travels in space, he must take more than air, food, and water. This program says he also needs curiosity, determination, and courage. The following is from NIT, National Instructional Television. Ripples. Man always wanted to go to the moon, but it always hung above him, just out of his reach. Man wanted to go to the moon for the adventure of taking his first step beyond his home, the Earth. He also wanted the adventure of learning new things. And now he's finally made it. Astronauts have walked on the moon, and they have set up experiments there to learn about the moon how it came to be, and what it's made of. The moon is very still. No air for the astronauts to breathe. No water to drink, no food to eat. To stay alive there, the astronauts even need a new skin, a special suit to protect them from this foreign, airless world. This is an Apollo spacesuit, just like the astronauts used on their moon flights. It weighs 188 pounds, which is more than most of you weigh. Its helmet is made of an unbreakable plastic. He has to have air coming into the suit to breathe. And he gets this through various valves that are on the suit, because the astronaut carries a pack on his back. Maybe you've gone camping and carry a pack on your back. He carries a pack on his back to hold the air for breathing. And a nozzle comes around and allows air to come into the suit and also carbon dioxide to come out of the suit. And the boot is made of metal. And the reason for this is if he should start walking on the moon and, pen it and step on a sharp rock, it will not go through the boot and hurt the astronaut. And then when he picks up the samples of rock, he puts them in pockets in his space suit. He has to have water to drink, so he carries a little water pistol with him. Now, it's not like a water pistol you would have at home. This has a long tube attached to the tank on his back, and there's a little port or a little hole in the side of his helmet. All he has to do is push this in the little hole and squeeze the trigger and suck water into his mouth. The suit the astronaut must wear is so bulky that he cannot move easily. If he tries to pick up a moon rock by bending over, he may fall. So he has special tongs and scoops to help him. The rocks are important to scientists on the Earth who want to find out more about the moon. The astronauts also take pictures to help the scientists add to what they already know of the moon. astronauts set up instruments which will keep on sending messages about the moon to Earth even after the astronauts are gone. The scientific things the astronauts have told us about the moon are important, but just as important for most of us is the new view of our own Earth they have given us. Our Earth seems suddenly smaller, 
but more precious and alive as it rises above the dead moon. When the astronauts get ready to blast off, millions of people on Earth hold their breaths. They know there's always a chance that something might go wrong with the spacecraft, that the men could be stuck on the moon. They're off. Pulling away from the moon in the tiny spaceship, the lunar module, heading for the larger spaceship, the command module, that will take them back to Earth. There it is. It's another dangerous moment for everybody. They must find the one right way to join the two spaceships so that the astronauts can climb aboard safely. With the men safe aboard, they unhitched the lunar module and cast it away forever. A last look at the moon, then on to Earth, almost three days away. The men on Earth keep in touch with them every minute of the long flight. Houston. Hello, Houston. This is Setting their course, helping them check instruments, the talking to them by radio about what they are seeing and hearing and feeling. The radio sends their voices through space almost as fast as you can blink. Just as your ear catches the voice of a friend when he is talking to you, a giant ear catches the radio waves of the astronauts way out in space. Without radio contact with the Earth, the astronauts might miss the Earth and sail off into space forever. We're thinking we may have to do a mid-course correction. Do you think you have enough fuel for a sustained burn? At the moment, everything seems to be functioning fine. We don't anticipate any problems. The astronauts are now closer to Earth. They can see more clearly now how beautiful it is, how alive, almost like a huge spaceship that has everything we need to make us comfortable, if we use it as we should. 
No other planet, as far as we know, looks like our Earth. No other place could make a home for the plants and animals of Earth. How different from the dead moon. All peoples, plants, and animals are our fellow passengers on the spaceship Earth. As the astronauts come closer to the Earth, the last dangerous part of their trip begins. As the astronauts enter the air which surrounds our Earth, the great fear is that they might enter it so fast that the ship would burn up have you ever rubbed your hands together and have they gotten hot? Try it. As you rub harder and harder and faster and faster, can you feel heat? Do you know what this is called? This is called friction. And you're doing the same thing that our capsule does when it comes back to the Earth after it's been to the moon. Because our capsule is coming back to Earth very, very fast, 25,000 miles per hour. And as it comes back to Earth, air on the outside rubs against the bottom of our capsule very very fast and so fast that the outside of the capsule glows red the last great worry is that the parachutes won't open and the astronauts will crash into the ocean too hard It's okay, they're safe on Earth. The whole world cheers at what they've done. Their hard work and courage has brought home knowledge which brings everyone on Earth closer together. Welcome home. by the Northern Virginia Educational Television Association. Ripples was created by a consortium of 12 educational agencies in association with NIT, National Instructional Television.